Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to walk you through how to create a machine catalog as well as create an associated delivery group with that machine catalog. But before we jump into it, there are a couple of prereqs you're going to require in that you're going to need either a Windows desktop operating system or a Windows server operating system depending on if you're doing virtual apps or virtual desktops. And you'll want to make sure that you already have the virtual delivery agent installed on that and that it can communicate with your actual delivery controller. Once that's all set up, which we're not gonna go through in this video, you can jump back over to your Citrix Studio console on your delivery controller, wherever you have your actual console itself, and we can go through the process of creating a machine catalog. So pretty self-explanatory, um, creating a machine catalog isn't too complicated. What you're gonna wanna do here is you wanna go to the Citrix Studio Machine Catalog tab on the left, and you'll see an option on the right for creating a machine catalog. And the way I always like to explain a machine catalog is typically it's your grouping of machines based on operating system, whereas your delivery group is where you're actually gonna be assigning the machines based on, on the actual security group the user's in or on a per user basis. So we have a, a lot of different options here. So if we're doing virtual apps, aka Zen app, we would choose server operating system. If we're doing virtual desktops, of course we would choose desktop OS. And then if you were doing a remote PC, let's say you were converting an actual physical um, computer itself into, into a virtual desktop, you would choose remote PC access, which is actually kind of cool to use if, you, if you're doing a lab type environment. But in this case, I already have a Windows 10 machine ready to go. So I'm gonna choose desktop operating system. And we have two options here. We have machines that are not power managed. So these would be like physical machines or machines that are power managed. So we can schedule like reboot schedules. We can turn it off from the studio console, turn it on, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna choose power managed since I do have a hosting connection created already. If you don't, you, you won't see the different options for the resources. So you have three options. We could choose machine creation services, which is a, again, it's a way of um, managing your machines, managing those images where it's very um, hypervisor intensive versus provisioning services where you actually need supporting infrastructure. You actually need a provisioning services server in order to be able to utilize that technology. But in this case, I just did everything manually. So I'm just gonna choose another service or technology because again, I just installed the VDA myself. I'm not doing any image management for the sake of this video. And then you have two options here. We can give users a random desktop every time they log in. So in other words, if I log in, if I have three desktops and I log in this day, I might get connected to desktop one, whereas six hours later, maybe I disconnect for a while, I might get desktop three rather than desktop one. So I'm randomly assigned a desktop every single time. Whereas a static, des a static desktop, I'm always gonna be assigned the same desktop every single time I, I log into my Citrix environment. I'll choose a random desktop in this case. And then I'm going to add my VM. And let's see if I remember, it's on server four. Let's expand that and I'm going to add my Windows 10 and Monica is the name of my fiance so that's why I named it so she has access to to this desktop and I'll call this my personal desktop but you can really call it whichever you want I mean a lot of times I see Citrix customers call it Windows 10 just to, to keep it easy to, to know exactly what's in that machine catalog itself. So this is creating now. Once this is actually done creating itself, um, we'll go into the delivery group section and we'll actually assign users to that, to that machine. And you see how quick that took. That's because we're not actually provisioning any new machines like what we would use for, for machine creation services for MCS. 
So let's go in and you'll see we're in the delivery group section on the right, top right, you'll see create delivery group. And then we kind of just go through the prompts. So you'll see here, I have one machine available for my personal desktop. If I had say like 10, I can actually choose the number of machines I want to assign to this delivery group because let's say I want to give some of these machines to like my nurses and then other machines to my doctors. You can split and divide those machines based on really based on the, the use case and how you, how you need to allocate those to your users. You can either allow anyone to be able to use the delivery group or we can assign specific users. So if I want to give it just to Monica and myself, I can specify users. I can go in and I can specify security groups. So all Citrix users will see this desktop. So a lot of options we have here. We can still publish out applications with desktop operating systems. But remember, if you are doing this, this is still a one-to-one -one relationship, right? So if I'm connecting to, let's say my Microsoft Word application from a Windows 10 desktop, well, if I'm connecting to that, I'm connecting to that desktop still, so no other users will be able to, to connect to that same resource, to be able to use that CPU and RAM that that Windows 10 desktop supplies. So it's not typically recommended to publish applications with the desktop OS, but you can. It just makes more sense to do it from a server operating system perspective for the multi-tenancy. So to publish out a desktop, we're gonna choose add under the desktop tab. Again, I'll call this personal desktop just for ease of simplicity. Uh, I'm gonna allow everyone with access to the delivery group to use a desktop, so that means the Ryan and Monica user account that I already gave access to will be able to use this desktop, whereas I can just assign it just to, to Monica as an example. Again, I'll call this personal desktop and finish. And if all goes well, that's creating the delivery group. And on the screen you can't see, let's, I'm gonna try to access my Citrix environment since that's created here. And I'll log in as Monica and we should see that personal desktop located in my storefront now. So there we go, we see it there. Whereas if I log in with, let's say, administrator, well, I never published administrator to have that personal desktop. So you'll see here, it's not actually available to me. So pretty simple video. If you do have any questions, feel free to write in the comment boxes below. I'm happy to help out and hopefully this, this video helps. Um, thanks everyone.